The way advanced semiconductor chips are being built is changing thanks to things like advanced packaging, chiplet designs, 3D stacking, and so much more. We're already seeing a lot of the big players like AMD with their MI300, which is designed using groundbreaking 3D technology. We also know NVIDIA's H100 Tensor Core GPU uses numerous advanced technologies, uh, advanced packaging technologies, and even Apple with their M2 Ultra and their own silicone chips are using advanced packaging to to continue to innovate and bring amazing, amazing silicon to the consumer and other kind of customers. So in today's episode, what I want to do is take a closer look at six semiconductor companies that can benefit from this change happening in the way semiconductors, advanced semiconductors are being built. So let's take a closer look in today's episode. So first, before we take a closer look at those stocks, let's kind of take a closer look at the overall market. So we do have this pretty cool information from the Insight Partners, and they do mention that the advanced packaging market is worth $55 billion globally by 2028 and is expected to grow at an 8% compounded annual growth rate. If we take a closer look, advanced packaging is going to continue to dominate this kind of semiconductor market, and it's going to continue to outperform the traditional packaging. And like I mentioned at the beginning, advanced packaging is the way that uh, a, a lot of these semiconductor companies are being are, are creating a lot of their new advanced solutions, like the a AMD with their MI300. We also have NVIDIA with their H100. We also have Apple with their numerous kind of silicon. So it's very important and a lot of big players are using it. Now let's take a closer look at one of the big companies that's really kind of seeing a huge movement here. Uh, we can see on June 8th of 2023, TSMC announces the opening of advanced backend Fab6, marking a milestone in the expansion of 3D fabric system integration technology. So this pretty much Fab is going to be meant to mass produce a special type of advanced chip packaging. They call it TSMC's SOIC, System on Integrated Chip. And the construction of this plant started in 2020 to support the next generations of things like high-performance computing, AI, mobile applications, and other products and help customers achieve product success and win market opportunities. They also mentioned that chiplet stacking is a key technology for improving chip performance and cost effectiveness. In response to the strong market for 3D integrated circuits, TSMC has completely early deployment of advanced packaging and silicon stacking technology production capacity and offers technology leadership through the 3D fabric platform. So we can see one of the main players here is TSMC, of course, right? And I do have this pretty cool image here which kind of talks about the different types of packaging solutions that TSMC has. They have like their SOIC info for 3D packaging. They have their 2.5D with their chip on wafer. They also have their other 2D packaging. So TSMC is definitely a big player in this space. Um, and we are seeing reports that, hey, TSMC is planning advanced packaging capacity expansion due to the increased demand for NVIDIA AI tech. Uh, so right off the bat, we can see that thanks to AI solutions and thanks to this kind of push of the semiconductor market, advanced packaging is definitely a market to kind of keep an eye out, especially if you are a semiconductor investor. I mean, I, I kind of did an episode earlier yesterday on Intel and I talked about this. Intel actually is building a new plants assembly and test facility in Poland. And obviously this assembly and test facility is going to be one that deals with advanced packaging for advanced chips uh, so we can see a lot of big players are going into that move so i want to see that i want to see the first company to really kind of take a closer look at in this advanced packaging is tsmc I want to say for TSMC, it probably won't be too much of a revenue segment for them, but if they need to maintain this kind of push in this technology, because it's going to make sure that it drives customers to them, right? So we can see the company overall, if we want to take a closer look at maybe the company's financial, the company has plenty of cash and short-term investments. They have plenty of cash flow from operations. They do have a nice amount of total long-term debt, but like I mentioned, they have plenty of cash and short-term investments to pretty much cover that. So that's the first 
first company, and I want to say it's probably one of the most boring companies. The next one is one we've been talking about in this channel. It is Applied Materials. Applied Materials is more of a semiconductor equipment company. Companies like TSMC and whoever, like Intel, who are kind of dealing with advanced packaging would come to Applied Materials and be like, hey, we need some form of equipment to help us with this advanced packaging. And I think the remaining five companies we're going to take a closer look at today are ones that deal with equipment side. So applied materials, we can see market cap of 116 billion, dividend yield of roughly 0.92%. If we take a closer look at their most recent quarter two earnings report, they do mention that advanced packaging, while they are still in the early phases of the industry adoption, this inflection is a, already a great growth area for them. Their packaging revenue has doubled in the past three years to over $1 billion. They have a strong leadership position in key enabling technologies via their through silicon via, micro bumping, and hybrid bonding, and they believe they can double revenue again in the next few years with the further adoption of 3D multi-die packaging. So we can see here and Applied Materials definitely sees that advanced packaging can be a huge market for them. We can take a closer look at their growth opportunities. One of their growth opportunities for them in the market right now is advanced packaging. So I want to say Applied Materials is one that can definitely benefit from it. Obviously, they provide a lot of different semiconductor equipments. So not only are they benefiting from advanced packaging, but as we are seeing kind of this push of a lot of companies expanding and creating a lot of manufacturing plants all over the world, like Intel, like TSMCs, they're going to buy equipment company, not only for advanced packaging, but for other solutions. So Applied Materials is going to be my number two here. Um, we can see Applied Materials has plenty of cash flow from operations, roughly $6.8 in the trailing 12 months. And that's more enough to cover their total long-term debt, which is roughly $5.6 The company also has roughly $5.1 billion in cash and short-term investments. So this is another company that financially I'm not worried about. Now, the third company we're going to take a closer look at is LAM Research, ticker LRCX, another semiconductor equipment company, market cap of roughly $82 billion, dividend yield of roughly 1%. So let's just take a closer look at financials real quick from LAM Research. We can see cash and short-term investments is $5.3 billion, more than total long-term debt. The company also is positive in free cash flow and cash flow from operations, even though right now we are in a very, very crazy crazy downturn in the semiconductor market, especially for the equipment side. So overall, financially, I wouldn't be worried about LAM Research. If we take a closer look in 2022, late of 2022, LAM Research acquires Semsico to advance chip packaging. So LAM Research is also focusing in this product. Um, they did announce the complete acquisition of the company, a global provider of wet processing semiconductor equipment. Um, with the addition of this company, LAM Games capabilities in advanced packaging, ideal for leading edge logic chips and chiplet based solutions for high performance computing, artificial intelligence, and other data intensive applications. So, again, we can see LAM Research could be another benefactor from this. Again, like I mentioned with all these other semiconductor equipment companies, they can also benefit from the growth of all these plants being built all around the world. Uh, so LAM Research is going to be there. If we take a closer look at the company's transcript, uh, they did have a, a strategic decision conference on May 31st uh, at Sanford C. Bernstein. And they did mention that right now they see that the AI systems things like uh, GPUs, but other types of products are using advanced packaging. Uh, and they do believe that things, and just from LAM's perspective, they provide process like the edge and the deposition for those advanced packages steps. And they see their serviceable addressable market doubling in just the next, two, th next three to four years because of AI for advanced packaging for their advanced packaging serviceable, serviceable addressable market. Uh, so we can see this is going to be the next one that I'm going to take a closer look at. That is number three. Now if we take a closer look at number four. This is Bessie Semiconductor. This is uh, international company. So I do believe it's going to be at a different ticker. Um, but we can see this is ticker BESI. 
maybe try to check a closer look at your broker if you can trade this one or look a closer look at it. Market cap of roughly a billion, dividend yield of almost 2.8% from Google that we can see. Financially, this is also another pretty interesting one. Cash and short-term investment of 534 million. This is a lot smaller, right? The other ones were in the high billions 80 billion 100 billions even more Bessie's in the smaller cap right we can see this is a not a small cap but it's less than 10 billion dollars market cap and it's a, a different beast right so we can see 500 million dollars in cash and short-term investments um, they do have roughly 348 million dollars in total long-term debt but again they are positive and profitable in cash and free cash flow even during this downturn so again not something i would worry financially before we take a closer look at Bessie, though, if you are enjoying the episode, make sure to hit the thumbs up as it does help me grow my overall channel. I'm trying to hit 30,000 by the end of the year, and I really, really need your support. So make sure to hit the thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below any stocks you might enjoy with this advanced packaging. Um, finally, if you want to join my semiconductor membership, I drop weekly videos. Uh, just hit the join button. We're also having a community created in Twitter, a private community where we can just chat. Um, and finally... I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. So here we can see in Bessie in their most recent presentation, they do mention that right now uh, there's a huge, huge opportunity happening in hybrid bonding thanks to things like advanced packaging. They mentioned that hybrid bonding, not a question of it, but when and how large the opportunity, thanks to companies like AMD and TSMC achieving full commercial production for initial devices. We're also seeing adoption increasing by industry. Um, we're also seeing integrated hybrid bonding production lines now a reality as volume orders anticipated in 2024 and 2026 period. We also see those chip to wafers and, and thermal cup, uh, thermal cup bonding also becoming an important factor in customer roadmap so we can see things like 2.2.5d 3d and things thanks to heterogeneous integrations in the semiconductor market are going to be a huge grow growing opportunity for Bessie. Uh, again, we can see Bessie kind of talks a lot about chiplet, hyper bonding from companies like AMD and other big players out there. So again, this is a market that's kind of seeing a downturn right now, but are still providing some amazing results and are still somewhat positive in cash flow from operations. Now, the fifth company, I believe we're in the fifth company, is Kulikin and Sofa. This is ticker KLIC, market cap of $3.3 billion dollars another small one right dividend yield of 1.3 percent another company that provides semiconductor equipment all these companies have provide semiconductor equipment or advanced packaging solutions one way or another if we take a closer look this company what i really really like has no debt has plenty of cash roughly 734 million in cash and it is positive in cash flow from operations and free cash flow if we take a closer look, um, the Kulikin and Sofa has equipment for advanced packaging hybrid, for example, wafer level packaging. They also have things for other solutions like package on package. Uh, so we can see this is another big player here. Maybe not big player, right? Less than $10 billion market cap. Um, but overall, the company does believe that advanced packaging will be another growth opportunity for them. They mentioned in their most recent earnings that they remain very focused on supporting technology transition with the advanced display, advanced packaging, and automotive markets through several high-profile customer engagements and broadening adoptions of their emerging solutions, one being, again, that advanced packaging solution. If we take a closer look at Kulikin and Sofa, we can see that APS, which is their automotive, their advanced packaging, and power semi improvements continues to grow uh, or continue. It's, it's kind of taking a hit right now, but overall it is becoming a major, uh, an important portion of this company's total revenue. So I do believe this is another big player. The last company we're going to take a closer look at is Clack corporation ticker klac this one has a market cap of 63 billion so we're going 
back to a little bit higher market cap, dividend yield of 1.1%. So we can see CLAG, they do have to a nice amount of total long-term debt, roughly $5.9 billion, but they are positive in cash flow from operations of roughly $3 billion. They are also positive. In, they have plenty of cash and short-term investments of roughly $2.9 billion. So financially, I wouldn't be worried. CLAG mentions that they have extensive portfolio of packaging solutions, accelerated the manufacturing process for outsourced semiconductor assembly and test providers. So again, they have innovations in advanced packaging such as 2.5D, 3D, integrated circuit integrations using through silicon vias, wafer level chip packaging, and so much more. So we can see another player here, and they do mention that the revenue for their EPC group is driven by the demand in automotive, 5G, and advanced packaging. So we can see these are all six players that can definitely benefit from this market. The final thing I want to take a closer look at is all these companies are profitable. If you're looking for a company that has a growth opportunity, but maybe sitting at a great valuation as well, they are definitely ones to keep an eye out. We can see TSM, PE ratio of 16, applied material, PE ratio of 18. BE, uh, Bessie, uh, uh, has a, a PE ratio of 41, this one, in my opinion, is the one that has the more more to gain because it's a smaller company and can definitely expand a lot bigger. So PE ratio is 41. It's a little bit more on the pricier side, but I do enjoy Bessie because of that growth opportunity. LAM Research, PE ratio of 17. Kulikin and Sofa, Click, PE ratio of 16. And we have Clack with a PE ratio of 18.96. So I, I do, I, I want to say out of this list, I have three favorites. So my first favorite is Applied Materials. And I think Applied Materials allows me to be in the giant, in, in a bigger market cap and still kind of see some growth opportunity as well. But you guys know me, I'm more of a growth style investor. So the other two are going to be the smaller companies. I don't own them in my portfolio yet, but they, I am keeping a closer eye on them. I do before believe in valuations. They're sitting pretty interesting. First would be Bessie, um, the one that has a market cap of roughly $8 billion. And the second one will be Kulikin and Sofa. Click with the market cap of roughly $3.3 billion. So again, I do believe this market can grow and those could be ones that benefit dramatically because they are such a smaller company who knows maybe they might get strong in uh, advanced uh, uh, strong investments from some of the big players out there and right now we are seeing this big push in like i mentioned not only advanced packaging but also things like um expansion of semiconductor fabrication plants from companies like Intel, like TSMC, like Samsung, and the list goes on and on and expanding all over the world. We see it in Israel, in Germany, in Japan, in all over Europe, in the United States. So I, I do believe the equipment companies are ones that are looking pretty interesting that can benefit from a lot of this advanced packaging, which in theory benefits from the AI market. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care, have a good day, and see you next time.